right now. You are welcome to the Mindful Exchange. Welcome to the Mindful Exchange podcast. Hey, hey, happy St. Patrick's Day, y'all. Yo, we got to we got to get these um St. Patrick's Day cups filled up. You see, we got some special guests in the building. Rome, Joe, how y'all doing? Hold up, let me get my sound effects on because I got something special for y'all. You got to put your headphones on. They ain't got I mean, no I, podcast etiquette. I heard, I, no, I listen, I heard, I heard the applause in uh, the headphones before I put them on my head. Joe ain't trying to mess that fly ass head up. Nah, yeah. up. Yo, I yo, I, I can't have, front. That's I a, got little speakers here. Hold that's up. A, that's, hold a dope, that's a dope hat. So how's everybody feeling, man? I feel great. How, how, how you feeling, guys? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I feel, I feel great to be back. Be back from where? I've been, you know, I've been gone for a little bit. I've been sick the last couple weeks. You was just uh, kicking You should have kept your sick ass home then. I did. Now I'm back. You look like you got germs on you. You know, the biggest germ. I mean, his nickname is Germ. The biggest. Boss. You know what I'm saying? You are my sunshine. My homie. I had to get the joke out before Jeffy <laughs> started saying Yeah. Something. I wasn't going to say nothing. I think it's fine. But I, how is everybody, man? I miss everybody. I'm glad to see y'all, brother, man. I miss y'all, too, man. Rome, I'll never get to see you. I'm, good. I'm glad to see you. I'm, here, look, man. thank yeah, you, word. Joe, for dragging Rome's ass word here. <laughs> word, you know. You get a double... There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of dragon. Nah, it's beautiful that you're here, though, Ron. Oh, we gotta um, shout, appreciate you. We got to shout good out to brother Cal Joe the, too, man. We got to shout out to Cal with the jammy. What up, to Cal? We ain't seen you in a minute, brother. Welcome, right. welcome back. You been spending all that time in the jammy. Nah, I've been spending all that. Yeah, the jammy. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Tell them what you've been up to. Um, I've been working on my own podcast. Salute. I've been editing gaming videos, gaming content for my YouTube channel, Dope. which I haven't uploaded to for like months because I was trying to get all that fitted in. Then I ended up doing a lot of other things that would involve like TikToks and stuff like that. Dope, shorts, dope. All that. So, yeah. Salute you, to you, man. Okay, to Cal, we Why say, you ain't inviting me? You want to be the only light skinned nigga or something? Here you go. Why are you like, always on Uncle your light skinned nigga? I like video skin? games. Uncle Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> Why? It seems like you live in a world that is dictated by color like 24 you mean like, 7. You mean like America? <laughs> like your mind. America. When your wife is white and half of your family's black, how does that work? What do you mean, how does that work? Like, how do you balance that? Black people bring the food to the cookouts, and then, you know, the white yeah, people bring How we get the loans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> how it works. You know what I'm saying? Like, when they have something, we cook, <laughs> and then, mean, then, but, then, then, then they wife ready to drink. Yeah. Now, with Mexicans, that's it, it, opposite. It you both rolling dice. Oh, don't you start with that Mexican Yo, oh, shit again, bro. You almost no, got us canceled, nigga. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to turn your mic off if you start doing that. Um, it doesn't actually go down like that, fellas. What? I mean, just to be honest, like, me having a white wife, like, that's because I love her. It's not because we have some kind of fucking... Magical adva- power. Yeah, advantage. Like, yeah. nigga, the house is in my name, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, not mine. Uh, like, that ass, like... And it's not even that... It's still her house. You know what I mean? But... Real shit, like... Y'all won. I think I think I, I mean, think in nephew's every, head things, everybody brings something to the table. I think you know I, mean? I think there's divisiveness in your head when it comes to dark skinned people and light skinned people. I think what he just broke down is that shit only exists in your head. That's your head, bro. Like that's real shit. I don't even know how to respond to that. Ah hold up. Let me that, find my other that sound trash. effect. <laughs> that absolute Shut your ass garbage. Up. <laughs> Pure Shut filth. your ass up. <laughs> filth. Yo. It's not trash, bro. Like, you know, but. You know, filth, the, floor, and filth. At the end of the day. <laughs> <stupid>. <laughs> at the end of the day, like, you know, you bring as much to the table as your partner brings to the table. I mean. At the end of the day, my wife's family going to co sign for that car. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Yo, I swear to God, thank God I work at a financial institution that that can decline that loan. Oh, shit. You ain't gonna know what's you ain't gonna Yo, know what's I got proper white people. Yeah, Yo. Sure. Episode yeah, 35 sure. is oh. alive. Is this 35 already? Yeah, you're 35. That's crazy. 35. I'm gonna see her. I'm gonna see That's your almost name. old as me. I'm gonna see your name. Come you ain't gonna see there. my shit ain't gonna be on there. Yes, yep. sir. I'm gonna see any, like, your. Next to Nigga, I can't even get a subway card. I ain't applying for Yo. shit. Nigga, if I see your name anywhere, bro, declined. 
<laughs> we got to get a sound effect for that. Do we have one? Hold up, hold up. Let me see. We might have one. Can't be searching for the sounds. Have them ready, man. You're a professional. You ate them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get yourself the buzzer. Come yeah. on, Cap. Since we're talking about, um, f- kind of talking about finances, right? Why don't we segue into um, Good Brother Joe, what you wanted to discuss in the group. Like, we were talking about, pers- what was it, personal finances and managing money? Well, first of all, real quick, um, a lot of people don't know who you are, Joe. Can you give yourself a proper introduction? Dun, 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 you know dun, what I mean? With, with your name, title, and where you're from, so you know people can understand exactly what we're talking about and why you're privy to more information than some other folks. Great. Thank you very much. It's great to be here, folks. I've been watching your show. Love it. Appreciate great. You. Thanks for thank doing you, it. Thank you. Thank Love you for you. pulling up, Joe. That's a badass hat, Joe. That's Sorry. fly, ain't it? <laughs> it's dope. Man. You better not take that off and set it down. That thing might disappear. I that, think the hair come with it. That's that. You know I'm on it then. <laughs> Yo, that's that Caroline. <laughs> Yo. So where were we? Who am I? I'm Joe Cummins. I'm the uh, Community Inclusion Director at Alternatives Federal Credit Union over in Ithaca. I work with my good friend Rome here. And uh, I, you know, I've taught financial education for the last 24 years. Dope. That's dope. Um, yep. I had a class. I used to be. I were at the seven-week class I used to do before the pandemic, and uh, you know, it used to sell out every time we offered it. You know, there was a waiting list. People were just desperate. Yeah. You know, for financial education that they didn't get. Yeah, they don't teach it in school, so yeah. Right. Definitely an open market. What was it that got you into? Um, that field of education? That's a great question because people, when they hear that I work at a credit union, they're yeah. like, oh, your background is in finance, right? Yeah. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> it's in counseling. Oh, shit. <laughs> right? Oh, nice. Like, when you're thinking about personal finance, it's, the, it's addition and subtraction, right? The math isn't the hard part. It's the emotional part. Yeah. You know, so all these years, every class, what I'm dealing with is people's embarrassment and shame Mm. over the situations that they're in that they always, always blame themselves for. That's deep. Word. Sounds like a little bit of therapy. I was going to ask you, um, like, what community inclusion, like, what that meant. But then hearing you talk about it, I think it's kind of self-explanatory with the, the education that you offer and things like that, so... Yeah, connect people to information, you know, that they may have been excluded from. Yeah, I mean, information is key, definitely, when you don't know how to get it and you can get somebody to help you get there. That's definitely, um, yeah. you know, that's why, you know. It's like a road map, huh? Yeah, definitely. Um, financial stability and financial um, literacy is tough. <laughs> I like to buy snacks. Uh, Why are you? No, nah, I'm dead ass. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm, I'm serious because what he said is personal. So I, I had to realize that I bought coffee and I bought snacks so much that I, when I stopped doing that, I saved myself roughly $45 a week, which turns out to be $180 a month. How much do you spend on coffee. snacks now? Oh. Not, my wife buys all the snacks. 180 that's it? Yeah. I hit 180 I mean, today. That's because you're fat. That's I was, true. That is true. Triple the meals. Hey, Joe, I got a question for you. What, what are some of the common uh, strongholds that you see from your classes? I would say the top three behaviors that you observe that are common in people who are trying to obtain some, some literacy financially. Well, you know, one of the interesting parts about the class is that it was always filled with people who are, had lower income, mm-hmm. you know, that... Uh, we're on public assistance. And then also if we had people with six-figure incomes in the class, all in the class together. Wow. Right? So it was real interesting going around the room and hearing their stories. And then, again, every time I would do an evaluation after the first class and everyone would write, I thought I was the only one who messed up their credit, who couldn't manage their money. Like, everyone just continually would blame themselves. And then they would be in a room full of strangers, and they would see that everyone had the same story because we'd go around, and people would talk about their situation, and they would see that it didn't matter how much money I had, right? Like, that's normally what you think, if only I had more money. But there were people in the class, right, sitting next to you with six-figure incomes in the class because they were in debt. 
and, and stressed out, right? Like you saw the stress. So what do you think the difference is or the important part of managing the money when it correlates to the different uh, financial backgrounds? Like you have the $100,000 six-figure individual, the individual that makes way less. Like how are they correlated? Well, let's, I, I just want to, you know, ask the folks in the room, how, how did you learn to manage money when you were growing up? Like, what's your story? How did you? My grandmother. My mother. Um, it was a, a, a very uh, frugal, you know, type uh, vibe. Um, she she really didn't spend much, and you know, she didn't really spend too much time educating on saving. However, but just from observation and you know the the comments here and there, um, it, I kind of picked up on that. It's like you know, hold tight to what you have, save. You know, don't go by your means. And one thing was really she was adamant about is no credit, no credit cards, no, you know, things of that nature. So I think you could probably speak to it better than me. But um, I seen the thing where somebody was talking about and I think this is how somebody that makes six figures probably ends up in debt is they still live the way somebody who doesn't make six figures lives. And what I mean by that is they live beyond their means. Um, I. I I forgot where I seen it at, but somebody said that they spend 40% of what they make on living, and then the other 60% goes into something. Yeah, bro, you gotta you gotta break that down though, like, even further than that. Because one of the things with, you know, especially the African American community, when it comes to wealth in the United States, right? Like, if one of us make is makes makes it, then all of us make it, right? Like, so if I make it, then my family made it. But what does that mean? It means that the people that take care of me, I got to take care of them, right? Like, so how long does wealth actually last? I've been in situations where I've had six figures plus, And the people around you, know that you got that money, what are you going to do? Like, yeah, of course I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit off my mom's, no question. Easy. Easy math. My mom's, yeah, I'm going to hit her off. You know, my uncle, I'm going to hit her off. Hit him, hit him off. My, my, my sister, I'm going to hit her so off. So are we talking about like a lump sum of money yeah. or like a, yeah. <clears throat> or I make a certain salary um, I mean, I think, and I think a job? The reason why I say that is because nobody knows how much money I generate. I don't. I keep that totally to myself. Your uncle knows, as you should. Nobody as you, knows. As you Your should. uncle knows, nigga. Um, but that was by design, based on Uncle Sam going through shit in the past related to that. Like, because yeah. I came up as a hustler, so I always made extra money, so it was easy to have it. They know you have it. <clears throat> they might have their hand out, expect certain things. Granted, I've always taken care of my family. Like nobody has ever taken care of me. I've always taken care of my family. But I learned from that that they always expect me to take care of them. I can't do it now. Yeah, I mean, you know, any, with anything, you have to be limited. You know, the, 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 the groundwork of all financial things starts for me at my house. So as long as my house is taken care of, I can help or do whatever I can for anybody, but it's never going to outweigh yeah. the things that are important to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you my man. I love you. Okay. See, even my kids don't know how much money I generate. Exactly. I mean, they know what I do. They know where I'm at. They know that I'm productive. But but see, I think I think the thing is, cousin, um, brother, actually, let me give you your, your your due respect. Um, nobody knows how much I make either. Like it's not like yeah, you know, I don't advertise that. Yeah, I mean you know. I don't say like, okay, I make X amount of dollars a year. Yeah. Um, that's really nobody's business, but the people that is dumb close to me. Yeah. Like, they know if you got it or if you don't got it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just those couple people know if you got it. The only it person that knows if I have it. it is my wife, honestly. Yeah. I mean, if that's how you keep it, you know what yeah. I mean? And like, I keep it like my wife, my mom, period. I mean, but that applies to me being broke too, though. You know what I mean? Like she's the only we, one that knows. I mean, if... but but that's our, de you know, that was our design. Yeah. Right? Like our design was to be broke. Yeah. 
I we think were, also as far as whole fact, bro. as far as um <laughs> you taking care of people, yeah. I think um it, the higher tier you get to, yeah, um the less money you give people, unless they have a plan. If you ask me for fifty bucks, I'll give you fifty bucks. But I remember you said that before. I mean, if, remember yeah, if somebody was a it like episode two or three. Yeah, if somebody's a billionaire, a billionaire, and you need to get some, yeah. they want to know what's the plan behind it. Yeah. You know See, I, mean? I was never like that. I wasn't. I wish I would have had the um, knowledge then that I have now, because then I would be in a, a position where it's like I would have saved a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, a lot of money. I like Shaq's philosophy though. You got to have two degrees to touch my cheese, and he's talking about his kids. <laughs> oh, that's nah, deep. He, nah, he said that. I started, yeah. That's deep. You, you know what I raised? My kids are all hustlers. They're all go getters. All three of them. Um, they get what they need. They rarely ask for anything. If they really need something, they'll ask. But they much rather earn what they got to get. Um, and it reminds me of what you said earlier. We take care of people, but then they got to take care of us at some point. Mm-hmm. You know that's, what I mean? That's how it should go. And if I was if I wouldn't have invested into my kids the way I did. I probably wouldn't have that to look forward to because it, it alleviates a lot of fear and like anxiety, knowing that when I get to that point, my kids are going to take care of me. You're not going to end up in a home. <laughs> Shit, I, I, ain't, I ain't say all that. They might. <laughs> yeah, but y'all, I mean, I mean, if we, if, if, we, if we're, if we're being a hundred percent honest with each other, right? Like, you understand? Like this generation right here, like yeah. us, like we're the ones setting the bar yeah. for. Anything financial, Real right? Talk. Like our parents, my parents, cat's mm-hmm. parents, mm-hmm. because I know them personally, mm-hmm. I can say that. Real talk. Um, you know, came up in a little bit of a different era than what we're coming up in now, right? Like, so now mm-hmm. we understand this shit, right? Crazy, right? You know what I mean? Like the information is out there. Like we got it. I mean, so, I, I, I agree, but I don't agree. I think. I think even in our parents' situations, so my parents are the same, around the same age as Kurt's parents, but my parents are, my dad has a master's degree in sociology, and my stepmom is, has been a teacher for 40 years. So growing up in my household, when you talk about financial literacy and yeah. different little things, so when I was 15 and I got my first job, they opened up a bank account and I had to learn how to use a checkbook. I think your, I think your um, upbringing is probably like, a rarity. It is. You know what I mean? Because out of five to ten individuals I came up with, we was all in the same boat. Like, yeah, I'm not saying that we were. I'm not saying that we were like rich. That's not what I'm saying. Nah, that's what but, you're saying. Look at that boot on your foot. That's, how much was that boot? It got a pump on it. Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? These sisters fly too. I though. mean, you, but you kind of saying a lot though. You kind of saying a lot, and. It's okay to say that, like if that if that was your life growing up, yeah, then then salute to your family, bro. Yeah. Like honestly, because that's not a life that a lot of us come from. Like a lot of us come from that life where it's just like, like you watching your mom's just struggling to get by. Yeah. Shit, I didn't even know we was as broke as we was. Honestly, I was that's so happy fact, as bro. a kid. Like, Same. son, I remember when you was born. Like, I ain't even <laughs> going front, bro. Like, we go back that far. I don't even think it has anything to do with money as far as uh, what Hoodie's talking about, the upbringing. You, you could be poor and still teach your kid how to balance a checkbook. Yeah. Uh, son, that's stuff me, that's, me, that's me, not looked at. Let me let's 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 be realistic about why that whole sentence was bullshit, and it's not even a knock against you. But I love to learn. Yeah, I mean, it's not even, you know, I understand. But, like, listen, if you don't have no money, nobody's teaching you how to fucking balance a checkbook. I, well, that, I didn't say they were. I said you don't need money to teach somebody how to balance yes, a checkbook. Yes, you fucking do. No, you, if you of write a check, you write you a don't. check. No matter no, how much money you are, you have an bro, account. Bro, bro, how are you going to balance a checkbook with no money in it? I'm not saying you ain't got zero shit in aight, your account. All right, but you got to balance. When I'm saying you ain't have no gonna, money, if, I mean, you're not if, making $30,000 30, I guess, I, if if balance, I guess what he's saying, I guess what he's saying is, Rome, is what you said earlier. Numbers is numbers. It's easy to add and subtract. So whether or not you have the money, you can still. There's a lot of people that can't, that don't really know math, but they can teach you how to add and subtract. Is what he's. I mean, basically, is what he was saying. Yeah, if you got a hundred dollars and you write a check for twenty five, you can show the motherfucker that twenty five out of that how to balance it. Yo, <laughs> respect, respect. I mean, that's simple. Respect to both of y'all brothers, but all I'm saying is, if you don't come from money, you can't teach money. 
Like, I don't, I don't know how much more simple I can break that down. If you don't come from money, you can't teach money. I think, I, I mean, to, to I add on to that, as a parent, I, f- I can honestly say I would be reluctant to discuss how to balance a checkbook with my child Who's that? if there's no money, if there's no money that I, I actually have to discuss that conversation with my child as making it as a priority. Mm. What I would be prioritizing if I'm in that situation. Maslow's hierarchy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Got to eat today. Right, we got to eat today. And what can I teach my child how to get money? What What is a tangible thing that I can teach them so that they're not in a position to... So, right. I think that might, oh, so, let me, so let me clarify to start how we hold start. Let, let's keep in mind, too, that no, we I'm, can all have differing opinions in... The beauty in sitting in this room is yeah, no, nah, I was it's not to be in a consensus at yeah. all. Yeah, no, nah, I was because y'all know I don't give a fuck if anybody agrees with me. Well, or, except clarify, for my wife, to clarify and my what daughter. It is, when I got a job, I was making like two hundred dollars, and so my parents were like, "This is what we're gonna do with your check. Yeah, you make this. Say we're gonna save two hundred dollars. Yeah, so out of this two hundred dollars, we feel that you should save." This much money, yeah, and then you can allocate this much money for this, yeah. this much money for that. So it wasn't so much about their yeah. financial, okay. but it was more about the money that I was making from this job and how I can utilize. I did that it in with my kids. I'm doing that. At, I'm doing so that, that at the that, moment. That, so that, that, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yo, let, let me let me let me, let let me just, give you a real um scenario though. Real life, my real life. You gotta give when I was um working at McDonald's when I was 15. My mom took my entire check, right? And it wasn't at, at for you probably for like three to six months. It didn't bother me as much because I knew I was contributing. But people would say shit to me here and there like, damn, you don't get to keep any of your money. And I'm like, I got to help my mom pay the bills. So I felt good doing that. Word. But it eventually got to the point that I went down to um, Elmira Savings Bank, is it? Um, water. Yeah. And yeah. I opened my own account. And I told the lady that opened the account for me, I said, look. My mom takes my check. I just want to put my check up when I get paid and then give her what I want to give her. In hindsight, the lady looked so traumatized me telling her that shit because she probably couldn't understand. But that's what it that's what it came from. Mm-hmm. Um, there wasn't my mom wasn't trying to teach me shit uh, other than take care of these motherfucking bills, which she did that. And that was to my benefit because I've been doing it ever since. But she didn't teach me how to. And that's kind of manage what I, any kind of money. That, that's kind of what I wanted to push back on. But what Pooh said was, your priority should be where. What are we eating? How am I going to eat? But that doesn't mean that that's your only priority. Yeah. No, I know. Your I never priority said it was the only. I know. I know. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, your priority should be that. But then after you do that, show them where the money came from, that paid for the food, how you paid for it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean that. That's a. That's a very. Uh, Especially these days. I mean, that's a fine that's a fine line because you don't want to involve your finances and things with your children too much because they don't need to know the stress of how hard shit might really be depending on the and age of that. By design, that's kind of why initially I kept what I do as not, – I'm not going to use the word secret, but it really wasn't for their brains to be consumed by me spending $2,000 a month on a lease payment and my overhead is mad high, and I can't do this or do that. I want you to know that I'm feeding you when you need shit. You have it. Yeah. If there's ever a point in time, which I have done, educate them on how to properly go about certain things. I have the knowledge to give them that. So that's what I'd rather them be privy to. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. And that's if I agree, basically what I was trying to say. You, you said know, it better. Honestly, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just saying this, like, as a parent of. You know, five kids, like, your children are going to be interested in what you're interested in. Yeah. But how much are you going to involve them in what has to happen? Yeah. Right? Like, my kids didn't grow up like me. Like, I grew up poor. Like, me and Cap, like... Poor as a motherfucker. Cap's grandmother used to babysit me when I was a baby because that was where we went to daycare. You know what I mean? Like it's it's that serious. So if you don't have like like I hear all the arguments, but if you don't have a history of doing well and benefiting <clears throat> like yourself with financials and money, if you don't have that history, you're making it right now. But you don't come from it. 
So I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't. I, I just. I really don't want to get it more twisted than what it actually is. Like, like, like having money and understanding how to have money, and how to keep money, and how to build money, and and all those things. It's not an easy thing to do. No. It's but, it's super fucking hard. What are some of the things <clears throat> that you think that make it hard, other than impulses? You know, what are some other? I think that's the what makes it hard. Nigga, the hardest. I mean, that's what made I mean, it hard for bro, me. Like, like, that's the hardest. I, I know. But I, these days it's different from back then, though. Yeah, but you don't you don't know about inflation. back then because yeah. you're only ten years I mean, old. But but back then things <laughs> I'm just were. Fucking with you guys. Not, no. But um, <laughs> now it's like inflation and everything like that. Everything's costing way much more than but, what it would have. Think been. about it like this: so the yeah, inflation yeah. happens. Yeah. Listen, inflation, guys, inflation guys, guys we're, yeah, yeah. we're gonna respect each other's speech, um, because that's what we do, right? Um, we have enough time to talk about anything and everything we'd like to. Um, so what were you saying, to Kyle? Please finish. Um, with inflation. On um, mortgage for rent and even just buying your own house is way much more higher than it was just 10 years ago. And that's not even a long leap of years for things to end up as bad as they are now. You know, they work at the bank, right? Yeah. They could so, talk about that. So, stuff. peep it. We changed the whole mortgage industry, we changed the whole thing. Yeah. So, this is one of the things that, like, if I never. Mm-hmm. End up working another day on alternatives. This is one thing that I could say that we accomplished, right? Mm-hmm. We took all those barriers and put them together. So, what is stopping people from being able to buy a home, especially people that look like me, like you, like Joe, like Cat, right? Black as a bug. What are the things that are keeping us away from being able to do this? And we went through every obstacle. I said, okay, like, this isn't a good measure, right? Like, two years consistent time on a job. Like, people forgot COVID. Like, people had to switch yeah. careers. Facts. If they lived, right? So, all right, maybe we'll look at the last six months. Or income, same thing. You know, the situation that you're in right now, the situation you were in a year ago, there might be different situations depending on what happened during this pandemic. Yeah, that shit twisted some things up. In the certain Did situations, it. every year just gets worse and worse and worse, though. We're never going to see it as worse as it was, bro. Like, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I couldn't even imagine a world where we exist in what we existed in covid like if there's something past that, yeah, I was sneaking people in this even, motherfucker, man. I can't even I fathom that. That shit was so crazy to have an overhead. That shit was that shit was that shit was nuts, bro. Like I remember, <laughs> like, listen, you know, God rest his soul, brand new. We were here doing a quest. Yeah. Quest, you were here, me and you. We was going on. We was going yeah, on the mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. we was downstairs. We was downstairs right here. You know, we were doing our doing our doing our vocals line for line, mm-hmm. back and forth. Yo, news not here anymore. And that shit makes me fucking sad as hell. Fuck COVID. Uh, to Cal, what you was talking about about mm-hmm. every day it gets worse. No, I said every year. Every year. They were bailing out banks in two thousand and eight, bro. Like People not banks writing bad loans, knowing that the shit was gonna foreclose on. Like, yeah, it's 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 been worse. It's been a, a hell of a lot. Nah, worse. No, that's that's part of redlining. Mm. I mean, but yeah, it's been the, a hell of a lot worse. It's part of redlining. But the first I would thing, say, be like started like nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties. You gotta you gotta keep in mind, like banks versus credit unions. Does anybody in here know the difference between banks was, versus yeah, credit please, unions? Yeah, please please explain. No, I don't need to explain. I'm just saying. I don't. Like, I, I don't know. Really, anybody is, know the is it a credit union you? like a, a not for profit? Perfect. Yeah. It's about the members. So As credit well. unions are not for profit. Banks are for profit. So this is where you're putting your money, right? Like as a credit union, we're using your money to try to help you contribute, make more money, or just be a part of the process and 
as a credit union, like we've done a lot of things. What it, what it, what would be a y'all, benefit? Y'all bought that. Yo, quick, quick y'all question. Y'all bought like four of the mics. What would be a benefit <laughs> for someone to want to choose to go the bank route versus a credit union route? I'm in a credit union route, you know, that I had to be ingratiated through family. Like, it wasn't something I could knock on a door and say, can I join y'all? I had to be ushered in by a family member. So for someone that has an option that would choose a bank, why would someone choose a bank Income. instead of a, a, a credit union? Income. You make millions, you're choosing a bank. What you talking so, about? Someone that's not a millionaire. I'm talking about someone who's just nephew not a millionaire, that. bro. Nephew jumping no, in facts. with. Hold up, where's that button? If at? You make uh, millions, you choose a bank. Now, you ask what would be the difference? That would be the no. Difference. I'm I'm asking the financial experts, bro. Like I'm asking them, like what if what from their perspective? You know, nephew is an expert on everything. Yeah, my dude, my dude, my dude. <laughs> don't listen to me. I just do this shit every day. So <laughs> credit unions? No, are no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. No, I, I want. No, I'm, I'm just, asking our guests. Yeah. Forgive me, Takai. Yeah, no, I just, wanna, I just, I just do this. Trying to learn. I, I just do this shit every day. Like so, don't listen to me. I'm no expert. <laughs> Can I try to explain it a little bit to him? Yeah. So credit unions okay. are usually um, a bank. It's it's not a regular bank, but it's like a bank where you will deposit your money over time. You gather it and then increase it bit by bit. And usually banks are just for like people that already have that money to deposit a so ton into. This is where I have to interject, and I hate to do this. <laughs> But if I'm sitting in a room with experts, I'm quiet as a motherfucker <laughs> listening to the experts explain what the difference is, not giving a generalized explanation because I think I'm correct. Even if I think I'm correct, I'd rather listen to the es- experts say it so I can leave with the exact knowledge that I... See, if I would have said it, you would have said I was being an asshole. No. Nah. I was over here trying to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to be quiet. I, 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 I was at my phone. I was like, God damn. Shut the fuck up and let the experts yeah. answer. I did it. My fault. Yeah. 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 He's about, he about to come for all of our heads, oh, though, shit. so be Wait, prepared. I, I was sitting here. Me. Yeah, like, you. You a sniper. Nah. You a sniper. Nah, nah, so, nah, so, you know, Rome, can you, can you continue, please? And thank you. I appreciate it, good brother. I mean, I, I don't I don't know what you do every day, but I know your financial literacy game is a little bit better than mine, at least so, you know, I'm willing to listen, and I appreciate all the input that y'all, you and good brother Joe give me. No, I appreciate you, bro. Um, just because I have an expertise in, the, in, the, in that field of industry doesn't mean that I'm an expert in it. Like, we still go through the same things. Oh... Um, you know, we still worry about where our next dollar is going to come from to pay the bills that are unexpected, that just pop up. Like, it's, it's regular family life. You know, so as much as I can say, like, that I understand and that I know, the one thing I can say is that Home ownership is wildly important to this process. Like, if you do not own property, figure it out. Mm. You got to own property. That's the only way. It's the one thing God isn't making any more of is land. So get your property. Because, listen, Lincoln had great ideas but Lincoln got killed for those ideas. And as soon as Lincoln died, when there was a whole plethora of land and former slaves in the North Carolina, South Carolina area, harvesting their own land, turning it into what they wanted to turn it into because of all of the People fleeing, you know, the South after the, Civil, after the Civil War, moving to the Midwest. And then they took that land back. So what does that leave us? Right? Like, we're, we're all struggling. How many um, uh, African Americans were able to uh, to claim, like, land after the Civil War? At the at the end of the day, none, <clears throat> zero. I was talking to Tone uh, two nights ago at dinner about we were talking about the redlining. He yeah. um he's real into that now. Like he's learning so much in school, and he's like 
he didn't know anything about that shit, right? Yeah. So when he brought it up, Joe's face popped in front of my eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Remember when we was talking about because he educate you educated me on some things that I knew a little little tiny bit about, but the fact that now my kid understands that. You know what I mean? We got like fifteen thousand dollars left to pay off our house, and it's paid off, right? All three of my kids understand the importance of making their own money and owning property. I wish I would have known this shit when I was 19, 18, 20 years old. The fact that, you know, there were things preset to prevent me from getting what was mine. Mm. Well, I think that's the that's the benefit of, like Rome said before, that our generation is the generation that's going to push the wealth of the new wealth is like, we came up in an era where we had to learn yeah. and how to do things. Like I said, I was fortunate enough that my parents, you know, were college educated and they were exposed to different things, which exposed me to different things. But yeah. at the same time, you know, the lessons that I learned, even though I learned them directly from my parents, are the same lessons that you learned, but yeah. you had to learn them through life. So now what we can do in this generation is educate our kids so now that our literacy so now we're breaking generational curses of financial literacy because we're we're exposing them yeah. to things that just like you said you wish that you could were exposed to this at yeah. 18 19 how old is tone right now he's 20 do you see what i'm saying but you know what 20. Like, like, yeah. let me let me be explicitly honest for y'all yeah. cuz cuz you know those that know me that you know, y'all y'all already know how I get down. Like, listen, if you don't know about what happens in the banks and credit unions, then you just fucking don't know. As far as like what? A lot, bro. Like I can't even tell you how much <coughs> I've learned in the last so, couple of, last few years. Like, so when you say that, what should me, what would benefit us to know that we don't know that happens? Because, you know, it's yeah. kind of like if you don't yeah. play basketball, you don't know what happens in basketball practice, right? Facts. So what could we know or what would benefit us that we just don't know that happens between those walls? All right. So if you're a property owner in this room, as I am, anybody else is. Everybody, right? Raise your hands. Except for the you young are. bucks. Yeah. Right. They'll be there soon, so though. So you think, you know, taking out a... Uh, Home equity line of credit was designed so that you could fix something. Raise your hands. That's why me and my wife never did it. I, I pushed her to try to do it before, and she was like, nah, we're not doing it, baby. If you needed to fix something in your house and you wanted to use your house's equity to do that, raise your hand. Nah, my wife wouldn't go for it. Mine either. All right, so how are you going to pay for it? You're not. I'm from, yeah, it's going to get paid for it got, done. It, got done. It, it got done. It got done. I know what you're saying. <laughs> it got done. I, 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 I hear listen, you. I hear that's you. That's all I'm saying. I hear you. I hear you. And in, in, in respect, you know, because. Just that, had to be more resourceful. Um, that's not the normal story. The normal story is you don't get it fixed. You don't do that mm. thing. Right? Like you get home equities because you have equity in your home and you want to get that cash, but who the hell taught you how to deal with twenty, thirty, forty, a hundred thousand dollars in cash? I taught myself. Right. Be but but you can't teach yourself unless you get there. Mm -hmm. I got if there. If you're not there I got yeah. there and I if fucked up. If you're not up. there, who's gonna teach you? I'm not saying I learned easy or Life. correctly because I fucked up. Like everybody <clears> fucked up I with fucked their up. first hundred thousand yeah. bro. Everybody we all fucked up yeah. with our first hundred thousand. Yeah. And you see where it went. It went to my family. It went yeah. to this. It went to that. It went to thinking that shit was gonna just keep things. coming and yeah, like like you know, okay, like you got a hundred thousand now, you went invincible. It, it it doesn't work like that. To answer your question, uh, fifteen million acres. What? That's how much land black people owned after the Civil War. Fifteen million acres. That's a fact. It's a fact. That ain't much. And the scale and the scope of things, he's right. It's not much, but. It was about fourteen percent of the land that was available, but fifteen million is, is what they is have. That, and how much? And how much land? How much of that land? What is the value then versus what, what it, it is. is right now? Yeah, right. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and 
we did, a lot of us didn't get the chance to pass it down. That's why the white people have generational wealth. I'm obsessed with that. Land. I'm obsessed with being able to pass shit down to my kids, man. It's not about me in this lifetime. It used to be about me when I was younger. I'm obsessed with being able to pass shit down to my kids. Real shit. Um, other than my health and being here as long as I can be, nothing else matters to me. Uh, as much as that, I can say. And they know it. But you yo, know what I mean? But yo, Cap, like, do you feel yourself like, this is where I feel myself. Like, I have teenage daughters. Yeah. I have a adult daughter. Yeah. And I've got young daughter. Mm-hmm. And, like, when you talk to your kids about fighters, like, like, they don't come from what we come from. It's so crazy. Right? Like, they don't come from what we come from. Yeah. Like, and I'm talking to you yeah. as, as my dude, right? Like, yeah. Like, we know what Little each other... bro. We know what each other come from. Yeah. Like, we know where we be, we be, where we be at. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so, these kids... We've like, had these discussions before, like... We definitely have. Shit is so... We definitely have. It's so different that... But do you... Oh. Do now, you, think, you... Do you think things can be different nowadays because... Um, information is more prevy than it was when we were young. Yeah, and they're we robots. I, I told I these mean, guys you know, that. That's the what, whole thing. What are, like, yo, look, I told these guys when they first started interning, I said, yo, you guys are like walking robots now. <laughs> You're like cyborgs because you have access to information, and they're way smarter at their age in comparison to us at our when we were that age. Yeah, yeah, because we had to go to the library and look up the goddamn Dewey Decimal System to find the fucking book. And yeah. Now they just go analog. Now, you see, he just said, "Oh, how many acres did black people get when the Civil War? Oh, 15 million. Fact check right here. Analog like, versus digital. But now you know, you know what the main the main thing. I don't mean to cut you off you real go. quick. The main thing about that is though, if you choose to use it, Definitely. because it's available, but the individuals that choose not to access it. They're stuck where we were brought up. Yeah, I mean, but even even if they choose not to access it, the, the it's, it's still it's still readily available yeah. than it was for us. Yeah, the, their yeah. their generation is by far the dumbest and smartest generation of all time. Why dumbest? Um, because they just do dumb shit. Like what? Uh, you ever seen put them in a coffin? Nah, yeah, what's that? Eat Tide Pods, lick ice oh, cream, yeah, put yeah, it back yeah, on yeah. the shelf. Just stupid shit. But they're also the smartest because. They know what they want to do, yeah. and they fucking do it. Yeah, yeah but at the they end of the day, it. at the end of the day, this generation built your generation. Huh? Like, so. <laughs> no, listen, bit. no, I can disagree with that one. Yeah, how old are I you? Mean, listen. 25. And I, I'm part yeah. of this generation that you're talking oh, about. Oh, shit. No, he be no, repping no, his no, generation. No, 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 He's dude, closer to their generation. Do, so right? like, because cool. we, don't have the gang, ability, gang. we don't have the ability to raise your generation. We don't have it. No, nah, Because don't. everything is so much more costing than what it was for your generation. Yeah, yeah, I mean... And it's five to minus, six times that amount. Minus the money. Minus the money, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we are from a generation that is coming from a generation that didn't have shit. Yeah. Right? So, our whole mission is to make sure that you have shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I like, agree with that. You don't. Facts. You don't come from that. Like unselfishly. And, and, and it's not yeah. even. And it's not even that. Like, listen. I respect the fact that you disagree with me respectfully. Yeah. yeah. That's super dope to me. That's super dope to me. But at the end of the day, right? My generation, we didn't know about money. Like, listen, we knew yeah. about money. We knew how to get it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. We knew how to get it, but we didn't know what the fuck to do with it when we that's got what it. I, that's, that's what I meant earlier yeah, when yeah. I said I wish that's I would have known. We bought cars. We Yo, bought bro. chains. No, what I would say as far as what I'm God. saying is I think I think this generation. Man, clothes and shit. This like, generation is the reason why we're, we're such good parents. Yeah, yeah. I would say that. And then to, to yeah. Cal, I don't think you understand that. Shit costs more now, but you know, like minimum wage and wages go up. <laughs> Nigga, I was making like yeah, two so, yeah. two dollars and some change you know an I mean? hour at but McDonald's. The, yeah, like, yeah, like stuff goes up, but so does the wage. But Maybe it balances three. out. But at the same time, no, it doesn't balance out because it the does. wage it doesn't because the wages that we get and the process of everything going up and going up so fast, it's not enough. My G, listen, it's never been enough. I, I'm, I, not, I, I'm not I trying to argue with you. I agree with you there. I agree with you there. I think guys agree with me. I don't worry about it. He's a beast. He's a beast. He's a beast. No, 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 beast. No, 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 I, I listen, bro. Look, bro. Bro, you the, you the avatar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got he just don't want you. He just don't want you to jump on him. Tacal is a beast, man. Gas was a dollar twenty eight 
30 years ago, but Son. minimum wage was fucking 425. Yeah, I'm saying. Bro, I remember like, it used to cost like 50 bucks to fill up my Suburban in 01, I think it what's was. What's it now, like 80? Probably bro, be about 80 bucks. It was, it was, a little over it was, 100, because I put... It was I drink, but put that 93 in there. I don't like to say it because yeah, I drink 93. Think I'm by trying the way, to be that's like, just spicy. Yo, I have a question. Like uh, I'm flexing, but no. Joe, yeah. Joe or Rome, or both of you collectively. Let uh, me hold something. I, I have a I have a 17 year old daughter who who's doing very well financially with her stacking. Yeah, you know what, what I'm up, saying? What up, what up? What what would what would you recommend? me get her involved with, or to you know be taught, self taught, or me educate her on something. While she's in a position of being disciplined at saving money, you know, having G's and like outside of being, you know, very frugal and, and smart with her money and not, you know, being impulsive with her spending, what are some things that will help her for the next like five years? Yo, Quest, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, for the, the first thing that you need is a daughter that's going to listen to what you're saying. Like, so if you've already created that. Yeah, I got that. Like, like if, you know, you got to be a dad to do that. You got to be a dad to do that. If you're not a dad, like, your daughters aren't going to listen to what you're saying. But if you're a dad and you can get that message through, you know, respect, bro, for being a good dad. Credit. Appreciate it. Yo, you know what the dopest part about, one of the dopest parts about being a father to my daughter is that she don't listen to everything I be saying, right? My like, daughter's scared. She's so, she has an independent way of thinking, whereas, yes, she considers what I say to her, but she's so willing to stand up for her shit that I'll say some shit to her that's my opinion, and it it melts me every time she stands firm on her own, too. And it's I, like, dealt, that's I just recently I, dealt with that. It wasn't financially. Nah, it wasn't financially. But it's something else, you know. <clears throat> and I say that because she just left today. She was home for a little less six days on vacation, mm -hmm. her second vacation um, from school. We got to kick it, and you know, it just I'm seeing how much she's growing up every time she leaves and comes back. You that shit what? is I so Cap, bittersweet. I, Cap, Cap, I feel bittersweet. you. I feel you because I'm going through that with, yeah. with, with my four, my 13 year old right now. It's crazy. Who's soon to be fourteen? But at the end of the day, like Shorty, I appreciate your mind, but you don't make the rules in this house. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. all respect, dude. Like I appreciate all the smart shit you just said to yeah. me. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're still grounded. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but not Cap. Go to your room, Cap. What you just said was exactly what Word. I was talking about. What? The, the, with this generation. Yeah. No. What yeah. they want. Yeah. And they're gonna mm -hmm. fucking do and it. She's, you're right, you're and, right, she, and she's 19 yeah, now. <clears throat> she's living that's in a fair. totally different state by herself. I guess my point too is like, it wasn't long ago that she left to go to school. So when she left, she was my my baby that I was like so in fear of being out there on her own. And to see her progress so fast, yeah. that shit melts my heart, man. Like, okay, I don't have to worry as much as I was before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because she looks like my mom when she cussing me well, we, was on, <laughs> we, was on, we, we was on that space, Cap. Yeah, like, yeah. We was on that space. Like, yeah. Like, like I said, I remember when you were born. Mm -hmm. like, like, we remember when she was born. Robinson. Like, we all have gone through that. You know, like, just like, family and, and watching our families grow and then watching our families disappear. Yeah. That life cycle is crazy, man. Yeah, my really, new shit is really my is. grandbabies. Like, how you talk about your daughter, that's my new thing is my grandkids. Yeah. I got a grandson. I, fucking love I, I can I, wait, I, I but I can't grandson. wait. I, go to, I, I, I don't want to say it like I'm in a rush to have grandbabies, right? Yeah. But everybody in my family knows that I love the kids. So... Trick daddy. <laughs> so... I get to see my nieces, nephews, and it's not like they're my great nieces and nephews. I, I don't do that. They're yeah. my nieces and nephews. They say shit like, yeah. uh, what you do this weekend, nephew? Yeah. I bake cookies with my grandkids. Listen, That's what the fuck I did. I can wait, but I can't wait to have my grandbabies because- It's a different feeling, bro. My house is empty now, and yes, it's cool to have the time, space, and to do whatever- 
me and my wife want to do when we man. feel like watching hey. Netflix. <laughs> but I miss that shit, man. I man, miss listen, it. My grandkids came over. Um, they came over to help me fill Easter eggs for our Easter event next week. Uh, 11, 11, 7, and 2. Damn. Right? I named them after all dope boys, too. You, you stupid. Know? <laughs> <laughs> Janiah, that's Lil Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? Yo. JJ, that's Lil J-Bo. You know what I mean? And then Michael, that's Lil Meech. I'm just keeping it a thousand. That's Yo. what I call him. Yo, but Janiah anyway. is a star. Bro. But anyway. But Yo, he's so, stupid. Nah, but for real. So they, came, they come over, right? And, you know, we're filling Easter eggs. And my grandson, I just gave him some Easter eggs. Yeah. So this man, he done figured out how to put the Easter eggs together. So I don't know how many Easter eggs he put together and put in the box, but he ate all the candy and just put Fuck. all the Easter eggs with nothing in them. No. In the box. So now I had to go through the whole box. Now, I'm talking about 500. Now, I got 5,000 Easter eggs at my house that we've been filling up over the last few weeks getting ready for this Easter egg hunt. Hey, um, March 23rd at the Italian Veterans Club in Elmira, um, free Easter egg hunt. At uh, 1 o'clock, bring your kids. It's going to be a good time. My bad. Was a nah, do your thing. Do your plug. You know what I'm saying? But, we, you know, it's going to be it's a free event. We're going to feed everybody. We got appearance by the Easter Bunny. We got games. We got prizes. We got raffles. We got bikes. Come holler at me. Yo, did know? they put that bike together? Did you? Um... Nah, Paulie did. We, oh. put, it, we put it together yeah, last that, night. That was, a, not to get off on a tangent, but that was a funny-ass story. So, I got two bikes for Hoodie's Easter egg, Easter joint, right? Now, when I ordered them, I paid to get them put together. They delivered one, and I tried to get them sent to his crib. Yeah. But they sent both of the bikes to my house, right, on the, on the checkout. So they sent one of them put together. The other one they sent in a box. So I told them, like, yo, I paid to get this shit put together. They sent the box. I'm going to just bring you the, the box and all that. Yeah. My bad, but I paid for it. Facts. <clears throat> so the other day, I left the studio. I get home. There's two meth head looking motherfuckers out front of my crib oh, on the shit. sidewalk. And I'm like, they chilling. They're not like, they're chilling. So I get out the truck the way I should get out the truck. Like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're from Angie's List. We're here to put together the bike that you bought from Walmart. So, I said, Walmart ain't never tell me they were sending motherfuckers to put together no goddamn bike. So... Please tell me the bike so, was put together that so, for you. So, nah, so listen. <laughs> so, he's doing all this. So, I'm getting these messages on my phone, like, we at the crib ready to put the bike together. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is this? And what are you talking about? So, you know what I mean? They're texting me. because They're put, texting him. Because they, he put my number in there. So, yeah. I don't know what the hell they talking about. So it's some California number, and so then he calls me, and so yeah. now we're putting the story together. Because yeah. like, I'm looking, I'm like, who the fuck is this? I'm texting him back, like, yo, you got the wrong number. Stop playing on my phone. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it was a California number. Hey, yo, cat. That shit was funny. So if we talking about, like, how to build wealth in our community. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, I don't mean to take it back to something serious. Nah, we nah, got to be serious no, in order to progress that. in life. Shit. Word. But look, like, we've all been doing it wrong for a long time. Yeah. And not even that we've been doing it wrong on purpose. Like, we didn't know the rules. Thought like, we was doing like, it right. Like, how you going to play the game if you don't know how to play? Yeah. What, are, like, what are some the of the rules, rules that, like, that you can give right now? Like, to the audience, like, what are some basic fundamental rules that you can actually give? So, if you're a small business owner, you have to show equity, right? Like, you got to show that you're making a profit. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. There's no point in talking to me. What if you're not a business owner? So, then what do you need? I mean, a hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's how we're gonna look at the situation. Like, what do you need? Like, if you're saying like, I like, I got a tax bill that's seven thousand dollars. I need a personal loan, or I want to buy a car, mm -hmm. or this or that. Like, we've never had anybody that, and I'm and I'm gonna say this honestly. Like, we never had anybody in this hood, our hood, right? Our hood, 
We've never had anybody in our hood to tell us how to bank. No, we haven't. Especially not on the east side. Not at all. So how do we do it? Like, and the first thing is, is if you understand the generational wealth gap, the one thing that you're going to pick out more than anything else is property. Okay. You need to own your own property. Own your own property. And we've got a product that we developed to do just that. So that people have access to the capital that they need to buy the property. So I guess having the access, and to take it back to um, when Joe was speaking earlier, I guess um, the thing is, is you, you talk about information, and so access to this information. So if if people aren't looking for this information, or they don't know exactly where to go to get this information, so how how what are you guys doing to make this information aware? Because you said you were located out of Ithaca, so people in Elmira that are looking forward are trying to do different things as far as um, creating businesses or looking for the financial etiquette to be able to take one of Joe's classes to learn something more financial or to speak with you, Rome, as far as trying to educate themselves on what you guys can do to help them get to where they're going. Like, how do they do that? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. But you got to take the time to be able to set aside to be able to do it. Like, and that's really the hard part, right? Like, the problem with people was is their free time is already figured out. But who Sorry. figures out their free time to benefit their life? And the people that do that, you have my sole respect. That's real. So what I see and and what I think are different things. So like if you're saying germ, like I you know I'm gonna dedicate six hours a week to to benefiting my financial freedom, and I talk to you in a, in, in, a, in a year, and you're no farther than you were than when you started, I'm gonna look at you like you a fucking idiot, bro. <laughs> like how could you spend that much time and attention on yourself and not get anywhere progress mm -hmm. right like so if you did that right and if we teach our kids to do that listen i can't teach my kids how to do shit they don't listen to me they listen to the internet shit my daughter was talking about calculus the other day i said princess like yeah, but talking about the shit you get on your feet. You gotta scrub I love out. you. I you know, love you. No cap, cap. You, you on your own with this one. I got some calculuses on cap. my feet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no disrespect. I... Your daughter goes to Harvard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Nah, but what I'm saying, I guess, the, I guess my for, question for, for the EHS parents in the room. You stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I guess my. You know, question, you just be yeah. wanting to do shit. You want to help. You want to be like a, a, a asset to something. Yeah. And then you realize there's nothing I can do other than I, I don't want to say this like this because she wouldn't nah, accept this, but homie, I could I bullshit. could find a way to cheat. That's but bullshit. I wouldn't do that and she wouldn't <laughs> that's, accept that. that. That's bullshit. You know what I mean? That's yeah. bullshit. I don't even take calculus, nigga. Common core fucked me up. Like, when they started doing that stupid nah, shit. No, them Pokemon shoes fucked you up. <laughs> but here's Yo, <laughs> chill, bro. Yeah, nah, chill out, listen. Slim Bones. <laughs> okay. Slim Bones them. Yo. Bowling. I'm but only listen. I'm only six two two twenty five, but it's all. I was good. talking about how you so, look like Jim Jones. Yo, we got like oh, we got you. like two to three minutes tops so, um, left so on sure, this. We ain't so we get to. I know, oh, but, you got the, you got the but tape I, I want I want Rome. Huh? You got the tape rolling. Yeah, he right. is the tape. I want I want oh, I want man. Rome to answer my question though. He all is right. the tape. Rome, I want you to answer my question. Cop. I, I said, so for people who are looking for this information. To become literate with their financial situations. Good right? question. Good question. Um, how do they find you, and how do they find the classes that Joe? Can we put a link in this video too? Where, where can they go to get information to be able to become and learn and try to be? I understand what you're saying about me spending six hours a day trying to figure out or a week or whatever. But where can I go to talk to somebody that's going to know more than me? That's going to be able to point me in a direction where I can take steps. 
to become more financially literate myself. And no, and no, there, pun, no pun intended. And is there a program that every uh, credit union has that are that's similar to what you have, or is this just specific for what <laughs> yours is? Crazy. If I got, we, we got only got a couple of minutes. Yeah, left. We, we, he, he just gave I'll me that we got three percent left on the video I'll box, so we got to get it popping and that, that. let let Joe do his thing, wrap it up. Uh, Nick, let me know when we're down to two percent. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you asked about credit unions and banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a bank is for profit. Their job is to make money for their stockholders. Okay. Credit union is not for profit. They have members. We at 2%. That <laughs> motherfucker died. What the alternatives is it's called a CDFI, a Community Development Financial Institution. That's a special type of credit union. And their job is to help people, people in low income and minority communities build wealth. So there are less than 500 of those credit unions in the whole country, right? There should be 10,000, but there's not. So it's just rare to have a CDFI credit union like Alternatives, and that's why Rome talks about these special programs. Now to answer Hoodie, we do presentations. Last week I was at the Cedarwood Arts Center. Uh, uh, that was up in Ithaca, but she had me speak to uh, seasonal food service workers about budgeting and creating a spending plan. But that's what we do. We can go out in the community if you have a place to put us, place to talk to people, you bring people to us, we'll, we'll come talk to whoever you put in front of our face. That's dope. Right, so you guys have a let website me, or something? Let me, let me get the camera real to? quick. Let me get the camera real quick, not to cut you off, but we got like 1% left. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is put some links to their services in this video, and hopefully our viewers, we done got our weight up a little bit, so hopefully they can, they've helped me a lot. They're great people, very informative. Uh, Rome came from the bottom just like we came from the bottom. So he can help you get the fuck up off that bottom. Joe is very informative. Where we at? Uh, uh, press stop. Uh, we losing power, so he got to stop. Hey. Links in the in the description. Bible exchange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> comment and subscribe. Ho, 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 ho.